Hi everyone. Today we're going to be working with Unit 3, Day 26. We're looking with the Scale tool. Uh, we're really going to be focusing on Step 2 because Step 1 is something else you've done or will do with other skills. We're going to be working with the Evidence and Spatial Scale um, for a lesson in 10th Grade Global. Now, in 10th Grade Global, we discuss the Rwandan genocide. And this is part of a much bigger lesson where you talk about the human cost of the conflict and the human rights violations. We're going to use, again, a spatial scale and a temporal scale. Now, realize that this is a very serious topic, a very graphic topic, mass atrocities. It was mass murder. And you may need to stop. You may need to talk to your teacher or your counselor about it. This is tough stuff. So you got to go in with the right mindset and understand that this, we're looking at a scale of something that was very, very horrible. Now, we're going to use the autobiography of Paul Rissabagina, and then we're going to do Rwanda 20 years later, which is an article. Okay, now we're going to work with, as I said, the scale tool. The scale tool looks at looking at history, world history with time and space. And you need to think about history and what they call it, to eight, well, time and space in regard to number one, we have to talk about context. Context is what came before, trying to circle this context, meaning where does this come in? What sets it up? What came before? Where are we going? Next thing, and we're going to focus on that in this video, is the spatial scale, which is the individual, the community, the nation, the region, and the world. How do things slowly grow larger and larger, and how do they affect other groups? Then we're going to go to the temporal scale. Next video, probably. Whereas the immediate short-term, long-term effects of an event. And then finally, the last step is the historical understanding, meaning the impact and consequences of the event. Now, understand we're talking about something very tough, and very horrible. There's going to be a lot of impact and consequences. Um, at the same time, though, we're probably not going to get to step four in this series of videos. Just by the way, that contextualization, which is, again, not this video, but it's what was going on in the event, which is the Rwanda genocide, geographic location where it occurred is Rwanda. Key players are the Hutus and the Tutsis, and we need some background on that, which is the historical hatred between the two groups, or the history, how one group came to kill the other group. And that is part of the historic circumstances, which is what was going on before that. But again, that is not our focus right now. Our focus right now is the skill to the step two. We need to look at the evidence and the spatial scale, meaning we look at which individuals were involved, which people are involved. Um, now, it's all going to be from the same source when I model it for you. So that source is going to be from the autobiography of Paul Rusebogina, and then the local community of the nation, the region, and then the world. So let's look at this. We're going to try this with Paul Rusebogina's autobiography, a piece from that. Then we're going to see if you can work with a piece on your own. Let's try it. Okay, this is the autobiography of Paul Russes Bagina. Um, he wrote it together with Tom Zollner. Okay, now I can read this whole thing to you. I don't think you want me to. You're going to either pause this video and you could start to read it yourself, take some notes on it, or you can go to the read aloud tool. Now I can read this whole thing to you, um, or read aloud can read it to you, but I think you should pause the video and take a walk through the source. The primary source about how 800,000 ethnic Tutsis were killed by their fellow Rwandans, the Hutus. And what Paul Russes Bagina did to save lives of some people. And he doesn't talk about so much the saving lives at this point, but he talks about what, how people turned murderer. It's, it's, it's a tough read. Um, how people suddenly were walking around with machetes dripping with blood. And guys, this was on national television, on national world television. I was in the United States in uh, eighth grade, and I'll, ne I'll never forget what I saw. And, like, for example, this source, cut the tall trees, clean your neighborhood, do your duty. On the radio, they were basically saying to kill people. That was the code word for it. Tough stuff. The autobiography of Paul Russo's beginning. So the individuals involved, record answers here. The individual involved is. Paul Rusis Bagina and family. Now, Paul Rusis Bagina, his family, 
and those who took refuge in the hotel. Refuge meaning that they say them. But just by the way, guys, I don't know why this was italicized. You don't italicize unless it is a book cover. Let's fix that. Book title, excuse me, or title source. So the local community, the nation. Well, this is the Rwanda genocide. So this is Rwanda. Okay, again, I'm not highlighting this. Okay, record entity of the region. It's North Africa. Okay, got to be careful. I have my typo. And the world. Well, if you read the article, this refers to a mass genocide where one group was directed to, how do you say machete? I guess to butcher a neighboring ethnic group on the radio, on the group, to butcher a neighboring ethnic group. There were messages on the radio to commit atrocities, which is bad, horrible, awful things. You know, you could highlight this if you want. I'm just going to switch it away from highlighting just so you know that, because I don't, I think that unless you're trying to send the message, you don't highlight. Now, Going back here, can you do this? That's my question. So there's another article um, that came from the Associated Press. Um, it's in the Washington Times. Rwanda, 20 years later, woman forgives man who took her hand, killed her baby, as in um, they used machetes because one group was told and the other they were cutting down, even cut down the tall tree. Um, and it talks about how this woman basically forgave the person who chopped her hand off and killed her baby. Um, and what I'd like you to do, if you can handle it, is go to this article. It's actually a hyperlink. If you click over here, it will come up as a hyperlink. There it is. I want you to go through this article. And it talks about how they actually talk to each other. And it says... Um, they try to work things out. Their story of ethnic violence, extreme guilt, and to some degree reconciliation, meaning making peace, is the story of Rwanda today. 20 years after its Hutu majority killed more than 1 million Tutsis and moderate Hutus. The Rwandan government is still accused by human rights groups of holding an iron grip on power, stifling dissent, and killing political opponents. But even critics give President Paul Kagame credit for leading the country toward peace that seemed all but impossible two decades ago. So can you do that? For this article, use instead of the autobiography of Paul Rusas Begina, use Rwanda genocide 20 years later. Can you do the same thing for that article? Can you think that, and it has specific individuals in the articles, name them. It has a specific community. Yes, it's in Rwanda. The region is in Africa. The world, it's 20 years later. It's a discussion of genocide 20 years later. What can you do based on what we did with the first article? What can you do with the piece from the autobiography of Paul Rousseau's Begina? What can you do with that for this article? Um, and just by the way, before we go further, and I'm going to end actually this video here, and I'll take the next step in the next video, you should just know that Paul Rousseau's Begina is actually, was actually arrested this year because President Kagame felt that he's spreading terrorism um, in the sense that he's still spreading the story. And there's, it's not quiet. And I want you to know that. Things like this don't just go away. So when you take an article and you look at evidence at spatial scale, we're looking at the individuals, the local community, the region, and the world. There's so much more going on. It's a lot, but I think if you think about it on those levels, you'll be able to handle it. You got this.